So I tell you that all that you behold, though it appears without, it is within. In your own wonderful human imagination, of which this world of mortality is but a shadow. All things exist in the human imagination. And everything you see as an objective reality was produced by imagining. Had to imagine everything concerning the machine that took you to the moon. Everything in the world first has to be imagined and then executed. All right, the intelligence to do it will come, but you take the blueprint first and conceive it and dwell in it as though it were true. And no power on earth can stop it from becoming so. But tonight, if you're here for the first time and you want something practical, you apply what I've told you. First, have an objective. You must have an objective. You can say, well, I don't know what I want. Well, all right. Come back the next time. Ask yourself, what would I like of life? Don't be ashamed to name it. What would I like of life? Well, then, try to get some objective. Now, prayer, as far as I'm concerned, is nothing more than the subjective appropriation of the objective hope. That is the way to success. I appropriate it subjectively. How do I appropriate a state subjectively? Well, suppose now, this very moment, I wanted a ball, an ordinary baseball. But there isn't a baseball in the room, all right. But I want one. I would actually assume that I am holding a baseball in my hand until I could feel it. You think you can't feel it? Well, now try it. Try to feel what it would be like if you held a baseball. Now, to prove that you have held it, see what it feels like, the difference now, a tennis ball. See any difference? Or like a golf ball. See any difference? A piece of silk. You feel any difference? If you can distinguish between these many objects, though they are subjective, then they must exist somewhere. If you can actually separate them in your mind's eye and distinguish between these objects, I can begin to feel, begin to sense, begin to smell a rose. Well, a rose doesn't smell or doesn't actually have the odor of another flower. I can detect the rose. Now a lily, an Easter lily. I can detect that. But what does it do? Well, I'm going to get them. Someone will think of Neville and send him a flower. And it's going to be the flower that I'm going to actually feel and touch and smell. It works that way. Money has an odor. It's unlike any odor in the world. It's more fragrant to the miser than the most marvelous perfume in the world. He can tell it. You put a money bag to his face and it's like putting roses to mine. He loves it. He can smell money, he can feel it. Money has a distinct feel about it. Put a $20 bill in your hand and ask you to feel it, and then put another piece of paper in your hand and you can tell the difference. There's a difference, it is an odor to it. All this is part of the inner man that all things are possible to it. Try it, before you condemn it, try it. And if you have the evidence to support my claim, well then it doesn't matter what the world will tell you. If he laughs at you, so what? So they laughed at everyone who had an idea that seemed a little bit off-center. Always laughed at him. They laughed with the idea of going to the moon. Well, now it's, a, it's an accomplished fact. There are still those who won't believe it happened, you know, because they don't want to believe that it ever happened. There are those who said you couldn't go down and actually live underwater. Now we have a submarine. There are still those who won't believe it. You can present them with all the facts in the world and they won't believe. It doesn't really matter what the whole vast world thinks. Go about your father's business, which is yourself, and then live a full and wonderful life in this world of Caesar. So tonight, take a go. Make it a lovely go. Either for yourself or for another. For any time that you exercise your imagination lovingly on behalf of another, you're mediating God 
to that error. So, bring a friend before your mind's eye. Represent him to yourself as the man or the woman that you would like them to be. And don't tell them, ask for no praise, just assume that they're talking to you and telling you the most marvelous news about themselves. And you congratulate them on that good news. And go your own way. Believe in the reality of that imaginal act. It may happen tomorrow. It may happen the day after, or a week later, or a month later. It has its own appointed hour, and it is ripening, and it's going to flower. So don't be concerned. Leave it alone. And it will come to pass. So this is what I mean by feeling is the secret. I catch the mood, the feeling that would be mine if I were what I want to be. I don't have to touch something, I can if I want to, but it's the mood I'm speaking of. What would the feeling be like if she were well, if she were this? And then you catch it just as though it is true. You always go to the end and the end is where you begin. You're always imagining ahead of our ever. So go to the end and feel the end and then dwell in that end even though reason denies it and your senses deny it. You turn your back upon the doubts that is your senses and what reason dictates. That's the hell or the devil or Satan in the world. That's the doubt. So you turn your back upon it and then you walk as though things were as you want them to be. And living in that assumption slowly hardened into fact. Even though at the moment of the assumption it was denied by reason, an assumption though false, if persisted in, will harden into fact. So you learn to assume and learn to persist in the assumption and it will come to pass. 